Hello and welcome back to my channel CAD with Jordan. Today what we're going to be going over is 10 of my most used shortcuts that I use in Autodesk Inventor and these will almost guarantee that you will increase your efficiency within the program. So if I'm just going to get started off I will open up just a random part, I'll do this piston head and the very first one that I'd like to touch on is a very simple one and it's pressing down F4. So when you press down F4 you get this almost like target or reticle and then while you're holding F4 you can press left click and orbit the model nice and easy. This is a lot easier than your other options such as using this view cube and I believe there's another way of doing it by holding down shift and your middle mouse button as well but for me F4 is by far the best option. So that's number one. Moving over to number two, if I open up a brand new part and start creating a sketch, the very first thing that you're going to do after creating the sketch is extruding it. So rather than pressing finish sketch and then going into your 3D model menu and taking out the extrude tool or the revolve tool, you can just simply press E or R and then that will immediately bring up E for extrude or R for revolve. And that is just a very quick way of getting to the extrude tool. The reason why this is such a good one is because extruding and revolving processes happen a lot when modeling. So knowing the shortcut means you can increase your efficiency over time. Since you'll be doing it so many times over a long period of time, you will then be saving time. Sorry to say time so many times there. <laughs> anyway, moving on to number three we have the right click menu right here. But it's not just that. If you were to hold down right click, you'll see that you can draw a line. And whichever place that this line ends up in, in regards to this circle in the middle here is what you will end up using. So if I come to this sketch again, I can start with a rectangle by just drawing a line like that. And now my rectangle tool's out. The same for creating a line. So it's good to know what tools you have in this quick access menu. And this can also be edited in your options along the top here. And you can actually change what tools you have available to you here for very quick access. So that is that one. If we're moving on to number four, this is one of my personal favorites. This is Shift and X. And what that does is it just brings out the trim tool in a nice and quick fashion. Once again, could be just as fast using the trim tool, but we're here to do shortcuts today. But the second part that comes along with this tool, you'll see that when I've turned it on, there's a little plus to the uh, bottom right hand side of my cursor. Not only can this be used to trim like so, if you hold down the shift key, this also turns into the extend tool, making for two tools in one shortcut. Brilliant. Moving on to number five, we have to actually open up a assembly for this one. So what I'll do is I'll just come straight out of that and open up my four stroke engine assembly, which is actually accessible and you can make your own from my course, which is linked in the description. But what we're really here for is being able to change the visibility of a part. So there's many quick ways of doing this. You can do it in the model tree over here by right clicking and then come into visibility. Or as you can see right there, we can just click the part and then do Alt V and that will change the visibility. Alternatively, we can also right click and press V and that will do the same. Now, moving on to number six, we actually have a very similar sort of thing and that is the act of grounding a part. And that is just the same. So we can right click and we can see that grounded is right here. So we could just click that. Or if I undo that right there, we can actually just right click and press G and that is nice and grounded immediately. Moving on to number seven, and this is usable within the sketch environment or within a drawing such as some of these that you can see here. But I'll just show you in the sketch environment. If you just press D, it's a very quick and easy way to access the dimension tool and I use this all of the time I don't think I've ever pressed this dimension button at the top here because D fits so well with where I place my hand on the keyboard personally when I'm placing my hand on the keyboard I will put my pinky finger on escape my index finger on F4 and then my thumb on D and that way I can escape out of my dimension tool just by pressing escape with my pinky and then my index finger is always on the orbit tool just ready to go and the dimension tool is such a dynamic tool that it can be used in so many different ways that it's so useful just being able to pull it out almost immediately. Anyway, moving on to our next part, what I'm gonna need is a body. So I will just use the extrude tool just to get something going. And if you would want to cut through your model to potentially see inside of it, so what I'll do is I'll just shell it out real quick just so I can prove this point. So if I was looking at it from the top here and I wanted to see inside of it, 
what I could do is open up my origin plane or create a plane myself using many of the different planes here. And then if I was to start a sketch on said plane and press the shortcut here, F7, that cuts through the part to the plane, meaning that we can now see inside of it. And this proves to be extremely useful for me, especially when you're dealing with parts that have a outer shell, like I just said, and details on the inside that you'd like to be able to see. Anyway, if we were to move on to number nine here, we have the double clicking the scroll wheel. And what that does is it just centers the part in the center of your screen. And I find that this is extremely useful for beginners because beginners tend to lose track of where their part is by maybe zooming out too much and zooming in, doing a bit of everything. And no matter what, at the end of the day, you can just double click your scroll wheel and it will bring the part back to center. Lastly, and definitely not leastly, we have Control Z. And what this does, as you can just see, it just undoes everything that you've done. But hey, maybe you've went too far and you wanna go back to what you had before. You can do Control Y and what this will do is undo all of your undos until the point where we were at before. These two obviously go in conjunction very well and uh, I typically use them together a lot too. Anyway, that is just about all of the, uh, the different shortcuts that I personally feel are the best in the program. If you're looking to begin building CAD skills for your future as an engineer or designer, then check the link in the description. This is a course I created aimed at beginners meant to build a strong foundation for Inventor in which you can then begin growing your skills. The course offers a wide range of lessons teaching you about the majority of tools and basics in the world of Inventor. If you're interested, click the link in the description and enroll now to fast track your success. So if you're new to Inventor looking to get better, then I strongly suggest my course for beginners in the description. Throughout the course, you'll put together your own workshop vice as well as drawings to come inside it. While creating the vice, you will build crucial skills within Inventor and begin to start creating your own models. This is then all put into practice at the end where you'll put together your very own four-stroke engine assembly. Enroll today and start learning for a better future. Thank you very much and thanks for watching.